Inshallah, we will be starting program soon. Jazakallah khair.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And inshallah, as you know, the condition outside is not really, uh, uh, is, is slippery, not really that uh, great for uh, driving. Uh, Imam Kashif is on his way. We are just waiting for him. Give him a few minutes, inshallah. So we will uh, start our program. As you know, this program is uh, prepared, conducted, and will be done by our uh, Hifa school. Uh, we are into one year of our Hifa school, inshallah, and uh, with there were uh, uh, very ups and downs. As you know, when you start something new, this was our desire and the dream of the community to uh, start a full-time Hifa program. As you know, that we do have a program which is a part-time where the students go to school and then they come back and they do the hifas. And uh, But with the uh, grace of Allah, inshallah, and with the, uh, with, the, with the cooperation from the community and especially from Dararulum, uh, we were able to start our program. And uh, you will see what these kids does, inshallah, with these kids, with the presence of these kids, these hufas, the whole community is blessed. Because these masajids are houses of Allah and Allah is praised day and night in the massages. So these, being, these kids being here, the whole community is, 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 is rewarded for their contribution, for their time, for their du'as, for their coming here, inshallah. And uh, we, we do appreciate, inshallah, like I, like I said, just give us a few minutes in, and uh, we will be uh, starting our program. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, we will start our program and, uh, and with, uh, with our HIFA student, Hafiz uh, Abdullah, inshallah, he will be your host today. Mashallah. From now on, it is their mic. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala ashabi, wa ala ahlihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdullah Dar. I'm currently studying in Mashda Hamza Hif's program and I've memorized 11 and a half paras. Alhamdulillah, my ustads have given me the opportunity to be the host for you all tonight. Tonight we have a special program about the, about the value of the Quran and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Al-Hijr, verse 9, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Surely we have revealed the Quran and we will most surely be its guardian With that said, I would like to call upon Brother Zain Amri to start off the program with the recitation of Quran Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zain Amri. I study at the Masjid Hamza Hifs program. I have memorized six and a half paras, and right now I will recite 25 verses of Surah Rahman. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ar-Rahman Allama al-Qur'an Khalaq al-Insan Allamahu al-Bayan Al-Shamsu wal-Qamar bi-Husban Wal-Najm wal-Shajar yasjudan Wal-Samaa rafa'aha wa wadha'a al-Mizan ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان صدق الله العظيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Zain, for that beautiful recitation of Quran. Next, I would like to ask our respected scholar, Malana Kashif, to come up and say a few words.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وعن عثمان رضي الله عن قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رواه مسلم صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما Respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters and youngsters Indeed it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of us that he made us human beings the best of all the creations Allah could have made us from the insects on this earth from the birds in the sky, from the fishes in the oceans, from the animals in the jungles, we could not have objected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But without asking, without filing a request, Allah made us in the best of all the forms and shapes. Allah made us the most intelligent of his entire creation. For this we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of us sitting here, or most of us sitting here, Allah gave us this kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in the lap of our mothers without any sacrifice or without any request. All of us were born as Muslims, though in non-Muslim houses, as the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell, tells us. But it's the parents that either made us a Jew or a Christian or a fire worshipper or any other religion that is out there. So every newborn is born on Islam the parents change him and then if Allah guides him he reverts back to Islam so in either case it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all of us if you think for a moment hundreds of people die leave this world without believing in Allah and as Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam majority of them die without having this yaqeen and belief if they die in such a state they are doomed for eternity Likewise, hundreds of babies are born, as it was just mentioned. Majority of them are born, are born in non-Muslim houses. Allah knows best how long they're going to live in this world without the ni'mat of Islam. So Allah gave us this ni'mat without any sacrifice, without any request. For this we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Safar is going on. This is off the topic, but in less than a minute. The month of Safar is going on. It's the time to ponder upon history. What happened in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this month? He undertook the journey, the migration from Makkah al Mukarramah to Madinah al Munawwara. Historians say he started his journey on the 27th of this month and ended up in Madinah al Munawwara according to one narration on the 8th of Rabbul Awwal, according to another narration on the 12th of Rabbul Awwal. And we just look at the different perspectives of this story the physical sacrifice, the mental sacrifice and that was given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. In such dire situations, they ended up in Madinah al-Munawwara with the two clothes they were wearing, with the few uh, dinars or dirham that were there in their pockets, not knowing how, how, what the future carries for them. This gives us an idea with how much sacrifice Allah has given us this deen. And unfortunately, including myself, first of all, today, first of all, today, we underestimate this ni'mat of Islam. We don't realize this ni'mat and bounty, how great it is. So we should always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. And another great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made us in the ummah, the nation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of all the nations, the noblest of all the nations, to last, the last nation to come in this world, and the first nation to enter Jannah on the Day of Judgment. Having said this, my respected elders and brothers, the ulama ikram are here, mashallah. The teachers are here, the students are here, the elders, the management, the masjid, the sisters, the mothers, and the youngsters who themselves are the students, the main component of the madrasa. Indeed, it's a very auspicious gathering, a very blessed gathering. We should not underestimate this sitting here today. 
any gathering that has the discussion of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything related to the Quran Kareem and indeed is indeed very significant in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this extreme weather, driving back home would be difficult, but still alhamdulillah, brothers took out time and came in the masjid. Indeed, it's a huge sacrifice. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us sitting here today. Two things I'll wrap up in less than 10 minutes, inshallah. One is the value of this Quran that Allah has given us. And these youngsters, mashallah, are memorizing it and securing it in their hearts until they are alive in this world. And second, as parents, what responsibilities are there? And unfortunately, sometimes we underestimate this effort that is done by our kids and by the madrasa or the institution itself or by the effort put in by the teachers and intentionally or unintentionally we prefer academic education as compared or over the education of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so first as far as as far as the value of this book is concerned as far as the people who are carrying this book in their hearts and are living examples of the prof of the revelation of the knowledge given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the famous hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the nearest meaning khayrukum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa'allama the best among you the cream of the crop as they say the cream of the society are the people who learn the Qur'an and teach it so those who are memorizing the Qur'an apparently maybe in the time and situation where we are living not so much preference is given to them not so much value is given to them but indeed in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are very huge a person who memorizes the Quran it comes in another hadith mentioned by Imam Muslim Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna Allah yarfa'u bihaadha al-kitab aqwaman wa yadha'u bihi akhareen aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates the status of certain nations in this world because of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in fact Allah de-elevates also and throws down people because of this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under the commentary of this hadith it is mentioned by Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an was the Khalifa he spoke with uh, Umar uh, Nafi ibn Abdul Haris radiallahu an who was the governor of Mecca and he said whom have you appointed as we say in today's time the minister of the the forest and these areas jungal ka jo hai jangalat ke ka wazir kaun hai ya dekhbhal karne wala kaun hai so nafi ibn abdul haris radiyallahu an replied it's ibn abza rahimahullah he said who is ibn abza i don't know him so he said ibn abza is one of our slaves ibn abza is one of our slaves and he is the amir he is the caretaker of the forest so Umar radiallahu an objected to it. Why has been a slave made an Amir? Why has been a Ghulam brought on the status of being a leader or given, given a governorship of an area? So Nafi radiallahu an replied, he is the carrier of the Quran. He is the lead reader of the Quran. He's a pers- learned man who has the knowledge of the Quran. So when Umar radiallahu an heard this, he recited this hadith, Inna Allah yarfa'u bihaz al-kitab aqwaman. You, whatever you have done is right. Indeed, I have heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah elevates certain nations because of this book. The ulama know, you might have heard also the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, learn Quran from four people. Or in other words, read the Quran as these four people read. Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu an, Salim Mawla Abi Huzaifa radiyallahu an, Maaz ibn Jabal radiyallahu an, and Ubay bin Kaab radiyallahu an. Three are very famous. Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu an, a sahabi who was the most similar to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maaz ibn Jabal radiyallahu an, the governor a person who has mastered the rules of inheritance in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ubay ibn Kaab, the famous Qari. Everybody knows these three. But Salim Mawla Abi Huzaifa radiallahu an is not so famous. To make it short, he was a ghulam. He was a slave. And his master, Abu Huzaifa radiallahu an, bought him and adopted him as his son. At that time, the rules of adoption had not been come down, had not been revealed in the Quran. So he was known as, because of his adopted father, he was known as Salim ibn Abi Huzaifa. And 
Zaid radiallahu an was also adopted by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was known as Zaid bin Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the rules of adoption came down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Ahzab that these sons are not your real sons. Okay? These, this is just the word of the mouth. The names were changed. Zaid bin Muhammad became Zaid ibn Harissa radiallahu an, got the real name of his father. Salim did not know who his father was. He was brought in safe slavery while being a child. And there was no way to track the name of his father also. So then he was named Salim Mawla Abi Huzaifa. Mawla can be translated as the slave also. Mawla can be translated as one in the protection of someone also. So Salim in the protection of Abu Huzaifa radiallahu an. When the rules of adoption came in, Abu Huzaifa said, you are my brother. You are not my adopted son anymore. You are my brother. Both of them accepted Islam at the same time. Both of them were martyred in the same battlefield. Abu Huzaifa radiallahu an had already passed away. Salim was taking his last breath. He asked, where is Abu Huzaifa, my brother? He said, he's lying there. He said, bring me and make me lie beside him. So both of them accepted Islam at the same time. Both of them died and their bodies were placed, to get placed together at the same time. The purpose why I'm mentioning this, it's a long story. Umar radiallahu an said about him, Law kana salim, if, if Salim radiallahu an had been alive, alive I would have given the Imara, the Khilafah to him after me. It's, there were many qualities, but the ulama say the major quality because of which Allah gave such a high status to Salim Mawla Abi Huzaifa was he was the person who had memorized the Quran and had the knowledge of the Quran. Before migration to Madinatul Munawwara, he was the Imam of the entire group of Mahajireen in Makkatul Mukarrama. When he reached Madinatul Munawwara, he led the Jama'a of the Mahajireen in Masjid al Quba. So, now, just a quick point again, it's an interruption of the topic. Those ahadiths that say that your Imam should be the one who is the best in the reading of the Quran, it does not mean only the reading of the Quran, it means the knowledge of the Quran also. Unfortunately, not to criticize anyone, sometimes people misunderstand this today. A person has a very beautiful voice but does not know the masail of the salah, he has made, he's made the imam. Just because of the apparent words of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Salim did not have only a beautiful voice and did not memorize the Quran, he had the knowledge of the Quran also. So my respected elders and brothers and youngsters, we should not underestimate this nama. These kids are... Uh, spending the time in the most significant way, in the most significant manner, in the most virtuous of the efforts in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should never discourage them. We should always encourage them. Moving forward, as far as the parents are concerned, just to mention an incident and wrap up, a, bo a father came to Umar radiallahu an when he was the Khalifa and complained about his son, that he does not listen to me. He does not follow me. He does not obey me. So the father called, the Umar radiallahu an called the son and scolded him. When he was done, the son said, may I ask you a question? Umar radiallahu an said, go ahead. He said, what are the rights? What are my rights upon my father? What are my rights upon my father? Usually we hear from the parents, ke baabab ke hukuk ko bayan kare, imam sahab, maabab ke hukuk ko bayan kare, bachche hamari baat nahi sunte. Mention in Juma, have gatherings where you mention the the, the rights of the parents upon the kids, but never the parents, myself, including I'm a parent, we don't realize what are the rights of the kids upon us. So this was the question posed to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an by a young boy. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an replied, three rights are there that your father should have fulfilled regarding you. One is he should have, na he should have chosen a good mother for you. Second, he should have given you a good name. Third, he should have given you the knowledge of the Quran. So the son said, my father didn't fulfill any one of these three rights. My mother is a slave of a fire worshipper, first thing. Second, he named me Jual. Jual, in which, Jual means a person with an ugly face. And he has not given me the knowledge of the Quran. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an turned his face towards the father and he said, Tumne apne bachche ko apne khilaf bagawat pe khada kiya hai. 
you have made your son rebel against you you have made your son rebel against you so my respected elders and brothers as the saying goes for every action there is a reaction the way we bring up our kids the value of deen the yaqeen on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the importance of the sunnahs of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we inculcate from a real, from a very young age this will grow up and flourish and come out once they grow up and if our situation unfortunately to mention is the the boy leaves the maktab his topi goes in his pocket the hijab is left in the car for the next day the sipara is left in the car the next day the boy comes aaj gaadi badal gayi abba wal ab ammi ki gaadi ko leke chale gaye sipara nahi hai mere paas this happens with me this happens with the teachers here this happens around everywhere okay so if we are giving this impression to our kids it's okay topi is limited to the masjid hijab is limited to the masjid quran is only for half an hour place it in the car and next day pick it up from the car it's only the responsibility of the teacher it's only the responsibility of the imam my respected elders and brothers our kids are going nowhere just a few hours they spend in the masjid just a few hours they spend in the spend in the islamic institution in the madrasa majority of the time it's inside the house okay so we should not underestimate this nema rather we should be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last thing my time has elapsed already my respected elders and brothers allah does not sustain us in this world because of our degrees Allah does not sustain us in this world because we are engineers and doctors and lawyers or we went to Ivy League colleges. Allah sustains us in this world through his infinite treasures. Many masters are out many people who have done masters are out there. Many who have PhDs are out there but they are jobless today. they are sustaining and maintaining themselves on the help from the help of the government okay so it's not the degrees that sustain us it's the yaqeen and belief upon the treasures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm not saying don't get the education of this world in this time we have to get the best education available we have to become good engineers and doctors and lawyers and as, as in fact the ulama say we should try to go in every aspect of worldly knowledge that is out there as long as it's within the perimeters of islam and within the perimeters of deen. but we should not take dunya or acquire dunya at the cost of deen i'll wrap up with the saying of maruf qarqhi rahmatullah alayhi who was from among the shuyukh of junaid baghdadi rahmatullah alayhi he came to a masjid and prayed salat behind an imam he didn't know that imam imam didn't know maruf qarqhi so he went to the imam after the salah said salam how's everything and, he, and little introduction and he asked maruf qarqhi rahmatullah alayhi min ayna ta'kul From where do you eat? Just Urdu में आज कहते हैं तुम क्या कैसे खाते हो क्या कमाते हो? So Maruf Karki Rahmatullah Alayhi replied, "Isbir, hatta uidu salati alati sallay tuha khalfak. Wait, be patient unless I until I repeat my salat that I prayed behind you. Then I'll give you the answer to this question." So the Imam was puzzled. He said, "Walima, have I done a mistake? Why are you saying this? I should wait. You should repeat the first salah that you prayed behind me, and then you are going to answer my question." The reply of Maruf Karhi, rahmatullah alayhi, was, "لأن من شك في رزقه شك في خالقه." A person, jisko jo hai, is baat ke andar shak ho ki usko rozi kahan se milti hai, usko Allah ke Allah hone ke andar bhi shak hai. a person who is not sure and is uncertain where is he getting his risk from where is he getting his sustenance from where is he getting in other words his wealth and salary from indeed he is uncertain about the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he is uncertain that allah is his rabb and allah is his god and allah is his lord so my respected elders and brothers and i open for me and for all of us our yaqeen and reliance should be in allah and because of these good deeds and the quran and the book of allah allah will sustain us all also and our future generations to come also whatever was said and heard may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to act upon these things amen Jazakum Allah khair Imam Kashif for these words of wisdom may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to apply them in our lives Next I would like to call upon brother Hamza Owais for nasheed about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Urdu Allahu 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Amir Hamza Awais and I'm currently studying in the Masjid Hamza His program. I have memorized six and a half paras and tonight I'll be seeing a nasheed in Urdu about the Prophet Sallallahu Likha hai ik za'ifa thi ke jo makka me rahti thi o in baaton ko sunti thi magar khamosh rahti thi o sunti thi Muhammad hai koi Hashim gharane me o kehta hai khuda bas ek hai sare zamane me o sunti thi jo uske saath hai wo hai gulam uska musalma ho hi jata hai jo sunta hai kalam uska likha hai wo zaifa ek din kaaba mein jah pahunchi hubul ke paon par sar rakh ke usne ye dua mangi main tujhko poojti hu aur khuda bhi tujhko kehti hu bara afsoos hai jo aaj kal mein ranj sahti hu wo hum ye hai muhammad hai koi hashim gharane mein wo kehta hai khuda بس ایک ہے سارے زمانے میں مٹا دو اسے کی ہستی کو ملے تجھ کو انام اس کا جگر چلی ہوا جاتا ہے سن سن کر کلام اس کا دعا کر کے اٹھی سجدے سے اور وہ اپنے گھر آئی سمجھتی تھی یہ دن میں اب میری امید بر آئی زعیفہ کو خوشی تھی اب حبل بجلی گرا دے گا محمد تو محمد ساتھیوں کو بھی مٹا دے گا مگر کچھ دن گزرنے پر نہ جب امید بر آئی دعا کر کے حبل سے اپنے دل میں خوب پجتائی غرص ترکیب اس نے سوچ لیے خود ہی گھر آ کر میں چھوڑوں گی یہ بستی میں رہوں گی اور کہیں جا کر غرص ایک دن صبح کو اس نے اپنی ایک کٹری لی نکل کر گھر سے اپنے اور دروازے بے آ بیٹھی زعیفہ سوچتی تھی اب کوئی مزدور ملتا ہے اسے ہی کیا خبر تھی ایک خدا کا نور ملتا ہے فریدہ صبح کا کر کے ادا سرکار دو عالم چلے جاتے تھے کعبہ کی طرف و رحمت عالم جلوں میں آب کو شمس و کمر معلوم ہوتے تھے فئے تسلیم سجدے میں شجر معلوم ہوتے تھے زعیفہ منتظر مزدور کی بیٹی کے گھبرائی یہ قائت سامنے سے چاند سی صورت نظر آئی زعیفہ نے کہا بیٹا یہاں آنا بتا کیا نام ہے تیرا کہا مزدور ہوں اما بتا کیا کام ہے تیرا کہا مزدور ہے کر تو تجل کھٹری میری لے کر میں خوش کر دوں گی اے مزدور مزدوری تیری دے کر یہ سن کر آپ نے کھٹری اٹھا کر اپنے سر پر لی ضعیفوں کی مدد کرنا یہ عادت تھی پیغمبر کی غرص کھٹری کو لے کر منزل مقصود پر آئی کہا دل سے کہ اے دل اب تیری امید بر آئی لگی دینے جو مزدوری زعیفہ آپ کو اس دم تے فرمانے لگے اس دم حضور سرور عالم یہ کوئی کام ہے اما ملو اب جس کی مزدوری کوئی گر اور خدمت ہو تو وہ بھی میں کروں پوری یہ فرماتے ہوئے کہ آپ نے جانے کی تیاری زعیفہ سے اجازت چاہتے تھے رحمت باری زعیفہ نے کہا بیٹا ذرا ٹھرو چلے جانا مجھے ایک بات کہنی ہے ذرا سن کر چلے جانا وہ مکہ میں قبیلہ حاشمی نامو لقب والے وہی بیٹا جو ہیں سردار عبدالمون 
مطلب والے انہی میں ایک جواں ہیں جو سنا جاتا ہے سائر ہے مگر بیٹا وہ اس فن میں وہ اپنے خوب ماہر ہے نصیحت ہے یہی میری نہ سننا تو کلام اس کا نبی بریا کی دل میں نور وحدت برنے والے تھے نصیحت سن رہے تھے جو نصیحت کرنے والے تھے زعیفہ نے کہا بیٹا بھلا کیا نام ہے تیرا تیرا آغاز کیا ہے اور کیا انجام ہے تیرا کہا حضرت نبریا سے تجھے کیا نام بتلاؤں میں کیا کام بتلاؤں میں کیا انجام بتلاؤں میں بندہ ہوں خدا کا اور مجسم نور عزد ہوں کہا گردن جکا کر آپنی میں ہی محمد ہوں میں ہوں معصوم دنیا میں میرا دشمن زمانہ ہے خدا واحد ہی عالم نے مجھے بس یہ بتانا ہے یہ سننا تھا کہ بس آنکھوں سے آنسو ہو گئے جاری نبی کے عشق کی ایک چوٹ سی دل پر لگی کاری زعیفہ نے کہا بیٹا زعیفہ نے کہا بیٹا کرو مشکل میری آسان میں ایسی جیدق صدقے میں ایسی ہار کے قربا ہوا پھر حال پر اس کے جو فضل عیزد باری زعیفہ کی زبان پر خود بخود کلمہ ہوا جاری لا الہ الا اللہ محمد الرسول اللہ السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ جزاکم اللہ خیر برادر حمزہ فدہ بیوٹیفل نشید ابات پروفیت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی سے زندہ قرآن سورة القلم ورس فور بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ The meaning, more or less, means Verily, you have the best character, the best akhlaq Next, I would like to call upon Brother Hanif Abdul Rashid And Brother Zaid Kapadia for the translation and recitation of Surah Al-Waqi'ah السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ My name is Hanif Abdul Rashid I study in Masjid Hamza his program I memorize four Jews and I'll be reciting to you ayahs 1 to 16 of Surah Waqi'ah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا وقعت الواقعة ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة رافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هباء منبثا وكنتم أزواجا ثلاثة فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة ما أصحاب المشأمة والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم ثلة من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين على سرر موضونة متكئين عليها متقابلين صدق الله العظيم
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Zaid Kaparia. Alhamdulillah, I'm a student of Hamza Majid, his program. Alhamdulillah, I've completed three juz, and today I'm going to give the translation of Surah Al-Waqiyah, ayats 1 through 16. When the event, the day of resurrection, befalls, and there can be no denial of his befalling, bringing low some those who will enter hell, exalting others those who will enter paradise. When the earth will be shaken with a terrible shake, and the mountain will be parted to dust, so, they come, so that they become floating dust particles. And you all be in three groups. So those on the right hand, those will be given their accord in the right hand. How fortunate be those on the right hand, as respect for them, because they will enter paradise. And those on the left hand, those who will be given their accord in the left hand, how unfortunate will be those on the left hand as a disgrace for them because they will enter hell and the foremost ones will be the foremost in paradise and the, these will be nearest to Allah in the guards of delight, paradise. A multitude of the foremost from the first generation and few from the later generation on thrones, woven, gold, precious stones reclining thereon face to face. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر. إن شاء الله I intend to become a hafiz and lead the taravi in this masjid. Please make dua for me and my family. إن شاء الله آمين. May Allah succeed you with that. ما شاء Jazakumullah khair, Brother Zaid and Brother <coughs> Hanif. Next, we have Brother Adnan Ali and Brother Hamad Alam with the, recita with the recitation and translation of Surah Al-Mulk. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Adnan Ali, and I'm I am from the Masjid Hamza Hills program. I memorized three and a half parts, and I will be saying Surah Mulk one to eight ayahs. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فاضجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك ينقلب إليك المصر خاسئا وهو حسير ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وجعلنا وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين وأعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمَ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا سَمِعُوا لَهَا شَهِيقًا شَهِيقًا وَهِيَ تَفُورُ 
تكاد تميز من الغيث كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Hamad Alam and I am from the Hamza Masjid Hibs program. And I have memorized three paras and inshallah I will be doing translation of Surah Mulk 1 through 8 ayats. Blessed is he whose hand is dominion and he is over all things competent. He who created death and life as to test which of you is best indeed as he, and he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. Who created the seven heavens and layers? You do not see in the in any you do not see in the creation any merciful any inconsistency. So you turn your vision to the sky. Do you re, do you see any breaks? Then re, then return your vision twice again. Your vision will turn to humbled while it is fatigued. And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with stars and have made from them was thrown at the devil devils and have prepared for them the punishment of the blaze. And for those who disbelieve in their Lord is the punishment of hell and evil is a resort. And whenever a group is cast therein, they shall hear a loud moaning as it, as it heaves. It almost bursts with, with fury. Every time a company is thrown into it, its keeper shall ask them, Did they not come to a warner? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Adnan, and Brother, brother Hamad for that recitation and translation. Next, we have Wali Owais, Brother Wali Owais, and Brother Mirsab Hassan for the recitation and translation of Surah Al Najm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Wadi Muhammad Awais. I memorized three and a half bars. And I'll be, uh, I'm currently studying inside the Masjid Hamza His program. I memorized three and a half bars. And tonight I'll be reciting one through 25 ayahs of Surah Najm. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى علمه شديد القوى ذو مرة فاستوى وهو بالأفق الأعلى ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى أفتوارونه على ما يرى ولقد رآه نزلة أخوى عند سدرة المنتهى عند جنة المأوى إذ يخشى السدرة ما يغشى ما ذاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى أفرأيتم اللات والعزى ومنات الثالثة الأخوى ألكم الذكر وله الأوثى تلك إذا قسمة ضيزى إن هي إلا أسماء سميتموها أنتم أنتم وآباؤكم ما أنزل الله 
يَتَوَلَّوْا بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنَّ وَمَا تَهْوَى الْأَنْفُسُ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمُ الْهُدَى أَمْ لِلْإِنْسَانِ مَا تَمَنَّى فلله الآخرة والأولى صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Mirsab Hassan. I'm from Hamza Mazhif School, and I have memorized six bottles. Tonight, I'll read to you the translation of Surah Nadirim, Ayat 1 to 25. By the star when it descends, your companion, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has not strayed, nor has he erred, nor does he speak from his own inclination. It is not but a revelation revealed, taught to him by one intense of strength, the Lord of strength, so he attained completion, and he is the highest part of the horizon. Then he drew near, then he bowed, so he was a measure of two bowls and closer still, and he revealed to a servant what he revealed. The heart was not untrue in making him see what he saw. What do you then dispute with him as to what he saw? And certainly he saw him in another descent at the farthest low tree near which is a garden, the place to be resorted to, one which covered the low tree. The eye did not turn side to side, nor did it exceed the limit. Certainly, he saw the greatest signs of his Lord. Have you considered the lack in Uzza, and Manat, the third, the last? What? For you the males, and for him the females. This indeed is an unjust division. They are not but names which you have named. You and your fathers, Allah has sent for them authority. They follow not but conjecture in the low desires which their souls incline to. And certainly the guidance has come to them from their Lord. Or shall man have what he wishes? Nay, for Allah is a hereafter in the former life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Wali and Brother Mirsum for their recitation and translation. May Allah give us the ability to implement the Qur'an into our daily lives. Next, I would like to call upon Brother Arib Anjum for a speech about the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Arib Anjum. I studied in Masjid Hamza Hibs program and I will I know my memorized nine juz and I will be giving you the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am here today to talk to you about the greatest man who ever set foot upon this earth. This man was severely tortured and tormented for just one cause, to preach Islam. This man was the savior of humanity, and without him our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be the same. This man is none other than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a perfect example of an honest, merciful, trustworthy, just, and brave human being. We have all been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we must follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a perfect model as a human being in each and every aspect of his life. There is no example better than his to be succeeded and in any of these positions. That is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an example that we must adopt in our daily lives. To touch upon his life briefly, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in Mecca in the year 570. His father, Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, died before his birth, 
and his mother Amna died when he was six years old. He was then raised by his uncle Abu Talib, who was the leader of a respected tribe known as Quraysh. He used he was a shepherd, learning lifelong lessons for which he would use as the prophet of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. At the age of nine, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam joined his uncle on a caravan to Syria, where they met a monk known as Buhariya who could see the signs of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was 25 years old, she, he married a woman known as Khatir al Anha. She was a woman, she was a widow of age 40. In his late 30s, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam regularly went to a cave known as Mount Hira, where he, where he used to seek meditation. In one such trip, he came back running to Khatir Rajala Anha and said that he was visited by an angel known as Angel Jibreel alayhi salam and that he had been brought upon a revelation. When Khatir Rajala Anha heard about this revelation, she was the first one to accept Islam. This revelation continued for 23 years and are known, collectively known as the Quran. As soon as he began to recite the Quran and to start to preach the truth of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to him, he himself and his small group of followers suffered persecution from the unbelievers. This persecution became so fierce that in the year 622, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the, per, gave the command to immigrate. This immigration from Mecca to Medina some 260 miles to the north marks the beginning of the Islamic calendar. After several years, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his followers were able to come back to Mecca, where they forgave their enemies. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a perfect example of an honest, compassionate, truthful, trustworthy, and just and brave human being. Though he was a man, he was removed from all evil characteristics and strove solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala and his reward for the hereafter. Moreover, in all his actions and dealings, he was ever mindful and fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learning the story of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really helps us as his ummah, for the, as his ummah to gain affection for him. Also, by learning the sunnah, it will help guide us on the right path. Jazakumullahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Arib, for that speech about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Al-Ali Imran, verse, verse number 31, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibukum Allah, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. Sadaqallah al-Azim. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to tell the people, if you love me, then follow me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you and forgive you. He will forgive all your faults because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving the most merciful. Next, we ha uh, I would like to call upon Brother Umar Amre for a speech about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Umar Amri, and I'm currently studying in the Hamza Masjid Hif School program. I've currently memorized six and a half paras. Today, I will be giving a speech about the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the sunnah? Sunnah is an Arabic word which means a path or a way. However, Islamically, it is a primary source of law taken from the sayings, actions, and approvals of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Muslims, we believe that the law Prophet Muhammad wasallam came with is a divine revelation from our Lord, Allah. However, many people believe that the Quran is the only form of divine revelation as the literal word of Allah. This view is incorrect as it contradicts the Quran itself. About the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, Allah says, Your companion, Muhammad wasallam 
is neither astray nor being misled, nor does he speak of his own desires. It is only the revelation with which, with which he is inspired. So to a Najm, ayah 2 to 4. Thus, as Muslims, we are required to believe that the Quran and Sunnah go hand in hand together as our sources of legislated law. Both are revelation from Allah, the Most High. The Quran is composed of the actual words of Allah, whereas the Sunnah is expressed through the words, actions, and approvals of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Another difference is that the Quran is recited formally in Salah, whereas the Sunnah is not. As a way of life, Islam is perfect and complete. However, such are the times that we live in that some of the Muslims choose to deny aspects of Islam to suit their own desires. It is even more sad that many choose to deny the um, Sunnah in particular. This is clearly wrong, as the saying of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam says, I have been giving the Quran and something similar to it besides it. Yet a time will come when a man leaning on his couch will say, Follow the Quran only. What you find in it permissible, take as permiss per permissible. And what you find in it forbidden, take as forbidden. But verily, what the Messenger of Allah has forbidden is like what Allah has forbidden. What are the benefits of Sunnah? One of the scholars of the past, Imam Malik, said, The Sunnah is like the Ark of Nuh salam. Whoever embarks upon it achieves salvation, and whoever rejects it is drowned. This salvation will be the admittance into paradise and avoiding the fire of hell. Regret is a terrible state, but regret on the day of judgment will be even worse for the one who did not follow the sunnah. And remember the day when the wrongdoer will bite at his hand and say, Oh, would that have taken the path of the messenger? Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 27. This regret will continue during the punishment. On the day the faces will be tossed about in the fire, they will say, Woe to us, with that we had followed Allah and His Messenger. Surah Al-Zukhruf, Ayah 67. On the other hand, the one who adhered to the Sunnah will achieve the ultimate benefit. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger will be admitted to gardens beneath which rivers flow to live there forever. This will be the great achievement. Surah, <coughs> Surah Al-Nisa, Ayah 13. This is further confirmed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself when he said, he who obeys me enters paradise, and he who disobeys me rejects paradise. The sweetness of the sunnah will also be tasted during this life. The vastness of Prophet Wasallam's way is such that it produces a physical, spiritual, and psychological effect on its adherents. This fact is also recognized by non-Muslim scientists who have discovered that the sunnah is extremely extremely accurate in its conformity with modern scientific data. Scientific and medical facts which were recorded more than 1,000 years ago have only been discovered today. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing, I have ad addressed some of the importance of sunnah. May Allah show us the right path so that we can follow his commands as shown in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Umar, for that speech about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the success of the entire mankind in his obedience as well as the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is so easy to gain blessing from doing one simple sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, when you wake up you say, Alhamdulillah ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. When you go to the bathroom, you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khaba'is. When you go to sleep, you say, Allahumma bismika mut wa ahya, and many more duas. With that said, I would like to call upon Brother Shafi Minhas for some ahadith about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Shafi Minhas. I am a student from Hamza Masjid, his program, and I'm going to give a speech about the ha a hadith narrated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Reported by Al-Bukhari from Shaddad ibn Aws radiallahu anhu that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the most superior manner of seeking forgiveness is to say, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa aunt. خلقتني وانا عبدك وانا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت 
أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبو لك بنعمتك علي وأبو بذنبي فاغفر لي إنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت O oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has the right to be worshipped except you. You created me and I am your slave. And I am faithful to my covenant as far, and, and my promise as far as I am able. I seek your refuge from the evil of what I have done. And I acknowledge before you all the, all, all the favors that you have bestowed upon me. And I confess all my sins to you. So forgive me since none can, for, can forgive sins except you. And whoever says it in the daytime, being certain of it, and dies in that day before night, then he will be of the people of paradise. And whoever says it in the nighttime, being certain of it, and dies in that day, and dies in that night before day, then he will be of the people of paradise. Reported by Muslim from Abdullah ibn Masud, radiallahu anhu, who said, when, the, when Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, entered the evening, he would say, Amsayna wa amsa al mulku lillah, walhamdulillah, la ila, la ila hinna Allah wahdah, la sharika lah, lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa hu ala kulli shayin qadir. Rabbi as'aluk a khayra ma fi hadihi al-laylati wa khayra ma ba'daha, wa a'udhu bika min, sh- min sharri ma fi hadihi al-laylati wa sharri ma ba'daha. Rabbi a'udhu bika min al-kasali, kasali wa suwi al-kibar. وأعوذ بك من عذاب في النار وعذاب في القبر. We have entered the morning, we have entered the evening, and sovereignty has entered the evening, being for Allah alone, having and all praises for Allah. None has a right to be, none has a right to be worshipped except Allah alone, having no partner. Sovereignty is for Him, and all praises for Him. And he has full power over everything. O oh Allah, I ask you for the good that lies in this night and for, for the good of what comes after it. And I seek your refuge from the evil that lies in this night and from the evil of what comes after it. O oh my Lord, I seek your refuge from laziness and decrepit old age. And I seek your refuge from punishment in the fire and from the punishment in the grave. And when he entered the morning, he would say, Asbahna wa asbaha al-mulku lillah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha inna Allah wahda, la sharika lah, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin wa qadir. Rabbi as'aluka khayra ma fi hadha al-yawmi wa khayra ma ba'da, wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma fi hadha al-yawmi wa sharri ma ba'da. Rabbi a'udhu bika min al-kasir wa su'i al-kibar wa a'udhu bika min a'adhab fi al-nar wa a'adhab fi al-qabar We have entered the warning and sovereignty has entered the morning being for Allah alone and all praises to Allah None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone having no partner Sovereignty is for him and all praises for him being for Allah alone and, all, and he has full power over everything. O oh Allah, I ask you for the good that lies in this day and for the evil and for the good of what comes after it. And I seek a refuge in you from the evil that lies in this day and from the evil of what comes after it. O oh my Lord, I seek your refuge from laziness and decrepit old age. And I seek your refuge from the punishment in the fire and from the punishment in the grave. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Brother Shafi, for those ahadiths about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us the true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not just from the tongue, but from the heart as well. Next, we have an English nasheed by Brother Mustafa Ghani, Brother Hamza Nayat, Brother Muhammad Saad, and Brother Shakib Uddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Shakib Yudin. Um, I am current. I am currently recently studying in Hamza Masjid. His program, Amayama Nazara. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Saad, and I'm Hafiz, and I'm revising Masjid Hamza. My name is Mustafa Ghani. And um, I'm currently studying the Majid Hamza Hips program and I memorize nine pros. My name is Hamza and I study at the Hamza Majid Hips program and I memorize three pros. And we'll be uh, reciting a Nasheed for you. Oh, mountains of Makkah. One, two, three. 
O oh, mountains of Mecca, what can you say? On the day that Abraham passed your way, and he was instructed by God to build a house of peace where people will pray. And they will come on every lean camel and out of every ravine for the purpose of praising Allah, to glorify Allah. O oh, mountains of Mecca, what can you tell of the day when stones from the sky fell, destroying an army determined to break the house of Allah that Abraham built? O oh, mountains of Mecca, how was the dawn? On the day that my prophet Muhammad was born, how did it feel knowing he was to be? The last and most beloved of all, Rasul of Allah, Nabi of Allah. O mountains of Mecca, you were there. When the Prophet Muhammad climbed down in despair, engraved in his heart were the words of his Lord. To all of mankind, this was his call. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. O people, praise only Allah. Glorify Allah. O mountains of Mecca, how did you mourn? On the day that the Beloved returned to his Lord, and up till the last breath escaped from his lips, he prayed that his Ummah would find success. O mountains of Mecca, how will it feel when the earth shall quake and tremble with fear, and we shall be gathered together to stand in the court of Allah with our deeds at hand? Oh, how we pray that on that day will be with those whom Allah will say, Peace be with you, I am pleased with you. O oh, mountains of Mecca, bear witness that I, to the oneness of Allah do I testify. For all that he's given me, how can I deny? My purpose in life should be only to cry. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah, Muhammad is his messenger. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Rasulillah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Nabi Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Rasulillah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Rasul of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair, Brother Hamza, Brother Mustafa, Brother Muhammad, and Brother Shakib. Next, I would like to ask Uncle Zahir to come up and close the program with a few closing remarks. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I was just hoping this, pro this program will never end. You know, MashaAllah, it was a pleasure to hear from these kids. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great. And he provided us opportunity to serve these kids. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blessed us with so many ni'mah and one of the great ni'mah of these, these future fufas. And uh, as, as I said, that uh, when we started the school, uh, we, we went through a little bit difficult time, but alhamdulillah, with the mercy of Allah, uh, we overcame those difficulties. And this is our second year of the school. So if you see the progress, this is right in front of you. But some of these things weren't possible without the help of Allah and the cooperation and with these, those brothers. So. This third year, sorry, brother. Yeah, mashallah, time goes so fast. 
this is the third year. So with that, you know, like uh, we, we thank uh, all these kids for their great effort. We thank the community who, who participated, who got involved, and especially the parents, you know, who I, I, when, I, when we meet with parents, and it is great to know that the, some of the parents, they are telling us the story that their whole environment in their house has changed because of the work of these kids. Their eating habits change because of these kids. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easier for the parents and for these kids. You know, these are our kids. These are, our, these are the flower of our garden. They are the aroma of the community. Inshallah, every one of us will benefit from their education and from their learning of Quran, inshallah. And with that, inshallah, we also thank uh, Molana. These, these are the former teachers who, were, who couldn't make it here, and, uh, but they had a great contribution in bringing up the school and with the, with the kids. Among them, we thank Molana Abdullah, Molana Muzammil, and Molana Bilal. These are one of the former teachers. And we thank from the depth of our heart Darul Uloom. Because of their limited resources, they continue to help us, they continue to guide us, and uh, they continue to oversee our operations and the schools and education. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and uh, make things easier for them. You know, uh, We were expecting Mulana Mikhail here, but uh, he was, uh, uh, had a, an, another uh, appointment somewhere in New Jersey. May Allah make things easier for all of us. And uh, we also thank the uh, educational institution, Bethel Iman, where our kids uh, are registered to have the education, the other education, and like math, science. And I also thank our current teachers who took this task in a very difficult uh, environment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easier for them. Among those ustads are Maulana Muhammadullah, uh, Ustad Bashir and uh, Ustad Brother Adnan. And with that, inshallah, uh, before the dua, we have a uh, little something. You know, we have some uh, plaques of thanks for these brothers. Uh, since the brothers couldn't make it, you know, this is from the appreciation from the, uh, from the management and from the community and from the masjid for Dara Loom and our uh, former uh, Ustads, Maulana uh, Abdullah and, uh, and Maulana Muzammil, inshallah. Uh, so we don't want to be uh, between you and fool for too long, inshallah. Uh, before the dua, we have a little something for these kids. Inshallah, if you all line up, we have some uh, uh, thanks notes for you, and I'll request uh, Maulana Kashif, Maulana Muhammadullah, and Brother um, Adnan, Maulana Bashir, Maulana Bilal. So we will hand, we will hand over this little gift for you, and what you will be doing, we will be shaking hand with all the ulama. And uh, my special thanks to all the ulama ikram who continue to come and guide us. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these ulama ka jo charaq hai Allah paak isko jalta rakhe. These are the great value and this is a light for us. If you just see, if we turn off the switch, what happens? We can't see. These ulama are the guide. They are the one letting us know what is the right and what is wrong. Which way is the right way which will take you to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their, for their help in guiding us. You can start inshallah. Next, next, go, go, go. Next, next, next. Next. Make a line, make a line.
and and uh, where is Ibrahim Suhail? Ibrahim. 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 And uh, these these uh, these these two these are these two are Hufas. They were transfer students in our school in our Hifa school and they completed their Hifas. Alhamdulillah. And these these two little guys, inshallah, they're they're complete Hufas. May Allah guide them. And this kid, if you want, you can come sometime. And these kids, they they recite Quran in Qiyamul Layl in Masjid Hamza. We listen to them, inshallah. And uh, you ha we have something for you, officer. Uh, at the end, I'll, I'll request Maulana Kashif for the dua, inshallah. Uh, can we have a quiet so we can do the dua, brothers? The kids? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina azab al-nar Ya Allah, hum sabke saghira kabira gunahun ko maaf farma ہم سب کو قولا فعلا سورة سیرتا اخلاقا خلقا ہر طریقے سے حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی تبا نصیب فرما یا اللہ مسلمان پورے عالم میں جہاں جہاں آباد ہیں ان کی ایمانوں کی جانوں کی مالوں کی آبروں کی ملکوں کی حدود کی اپنے فضل و کرم سے حفاظت فرما یا اللہ ہمیں جتنے بیمار ہیں سب کو اپنی روحانی جسمانی بیماریوں سے شفاء کامل عاجلہ نصیب فرما یا اللہ جتنے بے روزگار ہیں سب کو حلال روزگار مہیا فرما جتنے قرضدار ہیں سب کے قرض ہوں غیب سے بندوبست فرما جتنے پریشان حال ہیں سب کی پریشانیوں کو دور فرما جس کی جو بھی نیک تمنا ہے اپنے فضل و کرم سے اس کو پورا فرما یا نہ جنہوں نے دعاؤں کی درخواست کی یا دعاؤں کے متوقع ہیں اپنے فضل و کرم سے ان کے تمام مسائل کو حل فرما ہمارے دوست احباب میں سے رشتہ داروں میں سے اساتذہ میں سے والدین میں سے جتنے بھی اس دنیا سے چلے گئے سب کی مغفرت فرما یا اللہ تو ہماری قبروں کو بھی جنت کے باغوں میں سے باغ بنا ہم میں جو صاحب اولاد ہیں ان کی اولاد کو نیک اور صالح بنا جو بے اولاد ہیں ان کو نیک صالح اولاد عطا فرما یا اللہ جو نوجوان اور جو بچے بیمار ہیں زمان تاریخ ہسپتال میں ہے ایکسیڈنٹ ہوا دو ہفتے پہلے عبد الجلیل بھی جو ہے ہسپتال میں ہے ایک اور نوجوان ببلو نام ہے وہ بھی ہسپتال میں دعا کریں کہ اللہ پاک سب کو شفاء کامل عاجلہ نصیب فرمائے اور جتنی زندگی باقی ہے بغیر محتاجی والی زندگی نصیب فرمائے اور اس مشکل وقت کے اندر اللہ پاک ان کے والدین کو صبر کی توفیق اور ہمت نصیب فرمائے یا اللہ یہ جو مجلس آج ہوئی اس کے اندر یا اللہ جو بھی بات ہوئی جو بھی صحیح ہوا اس کو تو قبول فرما جو اس میں ہماری طرف سے کمی کو تاہی ہے اس کو معاف فرما اور اس بیٹھنے کو ہمارے گناہوں کے معاف ہونے اور آخرت میں درجات کے بلند ہونے کا ذریعہ بنا یا اللہ اس ادارے کے اندر اس محنت کے اندر جو لوگ بھی شریک ہیں اساتذہ والدین مسجد کی انتظامیہ بچے جن لوگوں نے بھی مالی تعاون کیا اخلاقی تعاون کیا جسمانی تعاون کیا دعا کے اعتبار سے تعاون کیا یا اللہ تو سب کی محنت کو قبول فرما یا اللہ سب کو اخلاص کی دولت نصیب فرما اور یا اللہ ہم سب کو جو ہے مرت دم تقدین کی محنت اور خدمت کے لیے قبول فرما یا اللہ اس ملک میں ہماری اور ہمارے آنے والی نسلوں کی ایمان کی حفاظت فرما یا اللہ ہم اپنے بچوں کی تربیت تو نہیں کر سکتے یا اللہ تو ہی ان کی تربیت فرما یا اللہ تو ہی ان کی رہنمائی فرما ہر قسم کے شرور سے اور فساد سے ان کی حفاظت فرما یا اللہ پورے عالم میں مسلمان جہاں جہاں مسلوم ہیں فلسطین میں عراق میں افغانستان میں سیریا میں مصر کے اندر پاکستان میں جن کے حالات ہمارے سامنے ہیں کہ نہیں ہیں مالی میں برما میں بنگلہ دیش میں یا اللہ سب کے ساتھ رحم کا کرم کا عافیت کا سہولت کا معاملہ فرما اور ہم سب کا خاتمہ ایمان پہ نصیب فرما سبحان رب کا رب العزت عما یصفون وسلام علی المرسلین الحمدللہ رب العالمین